The reading this morning is taken from John chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Now, Jesus had learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but it was his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well, and it was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the ideas and the wisdom that comes from this passage. Father, would you help us to, uh, as we meditate on it day, to examine it with fresh eyes, to not just look at who said what, but to really dig deeper to understand the heart of what's going on here and the way that Jesus uh, met people at their point of need, saw people for who they really are, and helped them to break free from the things that were holding them back. And so as we reflect on these words, Father, would you help us to apply them to ourselves, to really take on board the kingdom values that are at play here, so that our relationships may be transformed and our impact in the world would be one that is for good. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Chris, for that. Um, it seems like every time I speak now, a Chris is doing the reading and prayer. So it was Chris King before, now Chris Harding. So Chris Mile or Chris Lovell, you could be next time I'm speaking. I'll let you know. Um, but we've got plenty of Chrises to choose from, it turns out. Uh, but great to be here this morning um, in Woodford and uh, with real people, as Ian said, which is quite exciting and a different dynamic. So who knows what's going to happen? Um, but this last week, Ian kicked us off in our new teaching series, Living Water, and uh, uh, focusing in on John 4 and some of the verses Chris just read, and then the story goes on. And we're going to be looking at it over several weeks, really going deep into it and seeing what it teaches us. Jesus and the woman at the well. It's such an incredible story. I have loved preparing for this morning. I have um, just just really enjoyed, like Chris said, meditating on it. And I just, I've got a lot in my spirit today and I'm going to try not to be too long, but I, I just, I genuinely think um, this could be life-changing. And I don't say that lightly, but if we, can I invite you to really lean in this morning and, and look and see Jesus uh, really and truly and to be really open to him speaking to you. Because I genuinely think this could change not just our lives, but the lives of so many other people around us. If we could catch what Jesus is doing and saying in this passage. And so just shake off any distractions or confusion or, or any, uh, anything that's going on around and, and zone in just for this moment, for these next 20 or so minutes, probably longer knowing me but who's own in and um, and listen in to what Jesus is saying let my words wash over you just listen for Jesus because this is absolute gold and when when we were kind of planning this series originally this morning was called being available last week was kind of being carriers and this week was being available um, but as we kind of look deeper, it was about crossing boundaries and more and more kind of looking at how Jesus did that and Jesus is an incredible example to us, not just about being available and being ready to enter into the Father's uh, work, but kind of, it, there was more than being available. And sometimes in the past, when I've heard this phrase, being available, it's almost, it almost feels a little bit passive, and I know it's not, but it feels like I've just got to stand there and say, Lord, I'm available, and he'll use me. You know, just some sort of kind of passive, I'm here, 
use me. And it's more than that. It's, and so the crossing boundaries, and that's what we want to focus on this morning, the crossing boundaries is about really being active in this and, and going, making that step and going to people. And this story just is incredible. And when we were first uh, planning this, and I put my hand up for, the, for doing this one, because I was like, ah, oh, I can tell loads of stories about when I lived in Tenerife for almost five years. And I worked at a place called The Living Room, uh, which was a Christian centre right in the nightlife area of Las Americas, if any of you have been or have heard Bill speak about it or Rachel speak about it. And, you know, I thought I could tell loads of stories about, you know, how I cross boundaries, you know, in, in culture and in my comfort zone. You know, I, I used to hang out with bouncers and drug dealers. I used to spend my time in bars and nightclubs and lap dance bars and brothels. And I could tell you story after story after story of just how awesome those things were. But then I realised Jesus tells a much better story. And actually what's in this passage is way more powerful than, than just some anecdotes I could throw out to you this morning. They are good stories, though, so if you want to have a coffee sometime, um, I can tell you loads of stories about that, but let's do another time. Let's really zone in on the passage this morning. And it's all about Jesus. It is all about Jesus. And there's a few things <clears throat> I want to point out right from the start before we go deep, but you know, this idea of a Samaritan woman... There's so much wrapped up in there. It's kind of just thrown out there. And we'll go look at it a bit more later. But this Samaritan woman, almost like a half-breed compared to the Jews. So it was perceived. The Jews always like, thank God I'm not a woman, let alone a Samaritan woman. You know, there's all that going on. But did you know this, this conversation between Jesus and this Samaritan woman is the longest recorded conversation Jesus has with an individual? Isn't that incredible? Jesus, it's, it's in there for a reason. And so we are spending these six weeks pouring over it because if it was Jesus' longest conversation, it's worth listening in. And he, she, this is also the first person he reveals himself as the Messiah to. It's really significant. So it's not just a, a kid's story, which as those of us who grew up in Sunday school, you know, we knew this story, but this, we could base so much on this passage. And Jesus crossed loads of boundaries in that encounter. So here we go. We're going in. We're going to go through some of the verses. And so Jesus, it says, decides to go up to Galilee and go through Samaria. And scripture says that the Bible says he must. Now, he didn't normally, Jewish people wouldn't take that route. They would go around. They'd go along the coast road to get there or go River Jordan and go around the other way. It was almost unheard of for a Jewish person to go through Samaria. Let's just, get, just take that moment. It was almost unheard of for a Jewish person to cross into Samaria to get up to Galilee. They didn't need to go through, and so they didn't. But scripture says he had to go. In John 4, 4, now he had to go through Samaria. Samaria. That, in the Greek word, it's kind of, he must go. It's like a, a, a compulsion. It was necessary that he took this route. And it makes it clear there's like this divine appointment waiting for him. He had to go. He was compelled to go. It was necessary for him to go through somewhere where normally no one would go through. Because there was something waiting for him in that journey. To go where no one else was willing to go. To meet someone no one else was willing to meet. And that has struck me massively this week. Am I willing to, to go where no one else goes? To meet those who no one else will meet? You know, when we talk about crossing boundaries, when we talk about mission and those sorts of things, often we're... We think about geographical, you know, about going to Tenerife or going to Zambia or, you know, going overseas. But we have different cultures surrounding us every day. We live in London. Most of us who are tuning in this morning live in or around London. And we don't have to go very far at all to cross a boundary, to, to be with someone who maybe isn't like me. And some of us, some of us don't have maybe divine appointments because we won't go where God's calling us to go. 
We hear other people's stories of how they talk about, oh, and then I, had, then I met this person just out of nowhere. And, or I went there. Uh, Carol Chamberlain, who's part of the Winchmore Hill Congress, she's, she's great at those stories. Anyone who joins the prayer meeting is so encouraging when Carol says who she's bumped into that day. But that's because Carol is willing to go where no one else will go. And that's why she has so many divine appointments. Jesus had to go that way so he could meet someone it was highly unlikely a Jewish person would ever meet. And if we as the church, if we as restorers, we as our generation are going to meet with people, we're going to see people come to know Jesus, to see them reconciled, restored, and the communities rebuilt, we've got to be willing not to go around, but to go through. We've got to be willing to, to go where God is calling us, to that neighbour, to that part of the community, to that town, to that shop, to that kid sat on the corner, to the angry woman down the road, to the gossiper who just slanders everyone else in the neighbourhood. We've got to be willing to go, to step out of our comfort zone. And again, with Tenerife, I think... There are so many stories because I was out of my comfort zone. And there's something about that. And I have lamented over the years that being back in the UK, I've become too comfortable. And so I find I, I don't step out in the same way with my neighbours in the way that I used to. And I, I've talked to Trina about it from when she was in Brazil as well. And there's, it's so easy to be comfortable in our neighbourhood, in our own homes. And to get in that rut and then say, God, I'm just not seeing anyone come to know you. Or I'm, not, I'm not having the conversations I think you want me to be having. And maybe that's because I'm not quite willing to go. He had to go. And then not only did he have to go, but it tells us that he was weary. Jesus was weary. He, he sat down, which I love just the humanity of that. He'd probably walked 20 miles or something from Bethany to that point. And... You know, it's not, apparently, I, I'm not a geographer or a, what's that word, Ty topography? Is that topography with the maps? Anyway, yeah. someone help. Fran, you yeah. should know yeah. these. Yeah. Topographer, yeah. But I, that part of the, that, it's not flat. It's not on a flat 20 miles. That would be hard enough, but it's up and down 20 miles. Yeah. He was tired. And he sat down. It says in verse 7, tired as he was. It says, Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Now, if there's something I've noticed about these past few months, we're tired. A lot of us are really, really tired. It's been a really hard year with all sorts of changes and disruptions and pain and grief. And we're really, really tired. And the problem with that is that when God interrupts, and we talked about this in the Jesus Way series, but when God interrupts, it's rarely a convenient time. And you're like, God, I'm so tired. And we talk about having a break. I'm guilty of that. Having a balanced life and a good rhythm, and I'm just going to, I'm a bit tired, so I'm going to take a rest. And we do need to take care of ourselves. I'm not saying don't take care of ourselves, okay? Don't hear that. But it's when we're tired and step back from what God is doing rather than being tired and still aware. I, I um, walk my dog twice a day, usually, and in the morning, sometimes I'm listening to Lectio 365 on my dog walk, which is a devotion uh, for quite a few of us in this church listen to. And I'm, it's kind of my time. And the other morning, uh, this week, uh, this is how relevant this is for me, but this week I had my, my earphones in, and I was walking. And I was feeling quite weary that morning. Um, there's you know, lots going on at the moment, and the to-do list is long. I just I just want to get this walk, get home and get on. And um, I had the ear, earphones in and I hadn't quite start, I hadn't started the devotion yet. It was just silent at the moment. And I walked around and out of the corner of my eye, um, I saw one of the dog walkers uh, that I have connected with over the years. And I thought, I'm too tired for this. He's a talker. He's a lovely, lovely 80 plus year old man. Um, but he's lonely and he likes to talk, and he likes my time and my attention. And I just was like, God, I'm too tired, I can't. And I purposely didn't look his way. I, I looked down at the stream just there and made sure, I, and then something in me, 
having <laughs> been prepared for this. I was like, I know, I know. And so I stopped and I turned around and I went to him, but how often do we do that? We're like, God, not now, I'm too tired, I haven't got it in me. And Jesus was tired. He'd walked and we make it about our comfort and our ease. We're not willing to be interrupted and so consumed by comfort and this culture that we're, we're in just so tells us that it's all about me and I've got to be you know, what I need and what I want and how I can be comfortable and at my happiest and all of you know. And I really struggle with that because it, it just permeates everything, even you know, in our gatherings. If we're really honest, when we gather together, and it's a bit different in that we haven't gathered for so long, but when we gather together, how often do we make it about what I need and my comfort? Rather than connecting with those around the, in the community. We just want to seek kind of our balance. And, but Jesus was willing to be interrupted. He had to go. And even when he was tired, he was willing to be interrupted. Now, this is a, a bit of a spoiler alert. And we're not meant to be jumping ahead in the passage. It says quite clearly in the teaching notes. We're not meant to do that. Know your, this, these are your verses. Don't jump ahead. But I am going to jump ahead ever so slightly. So whoever's on this week, um, I don't know which week it is. It might be five or six. I'm really sorry. But it's just a little spoiler. But we did read the whole passage last week. But it's interesting, when we're tired, and yet we still commit to, to going and stepping into those divine appointments, there's something about that that gives life. So when Jesus has finished this conversation with the woman later in the passage, he's, he was tired when he got there. And the disciples who have been off for food come back. And they say, you know, we're, we're, we're back, got, got some food. And Jesus says, it's verses 31 to 34, it says, Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. And then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? I love the disciples, they're always so clueless. And Jesus said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And that's the the upside-down kingdom of God, isn't it? When we're tired... Or we're, we're thinking, oh, I just want to step back. I, you know, it's, I just haven't got it in me. But when we actually choose to join in what God's doing, we get nourished. Isn't that just upside down? That actually we come away from, you know, come away from that. But, oh, wow. You know, my chat with the old guy, the other morning, it's amazing. And I went home with a spring in my step because he just, it was just a great chat and great company. And something about stepping into... The, the things of God and, and the had tos and those divine appointments where it nourishes us. It's food and life that, that we just can't get from anything else. So I want to encourage you in those moments where there's that decision where do I, I know God's saying I have to go through that way. I know God's saying that person, you know, I've just got a mm, little Holy Spirit gut feeling, but I'm so tired. Can I encourage you? to step and cross that boundary of tiredness because I guarantee you will come away from that with more life and more energy than you would ever get from having a 15-minute nap. I guarantee, I guarantee, I've tried the 15-minute nap. My alarm clock even has a siesta button on it so you can set an afternoon siesta. It's perfect. Um, I don't do that during the workday, Ian, just so you know. Um, right, back to the passage. <laughs> and then, so he, Jesus, he had to go through it. He had to go. He was willing to go through to a place where no one else went to connect with someone no one else would have connected to. And then he, even in his tiredness, he steps out and has that conversation. And then in verse 7, Jesus says, give me a drink. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? And the thing about this is Jesus is willing to go first. He's willing to ask the first question. And again, we have to understand that this time in history, this would have been unheard of. A Jewish man, a Jewish rabbi, speaking to a woman, a Samaritan woman, at public, at a well. It's unheard of. But he was willing to go first. He was willing to not worry what the perception was, what the rules were, and to go first and ask her. And we're just going to kind of hang around this bit now. It says... He says, will you give me a drink? And he was willing to go first. He didn't look down at her. He didn't say, I'm Jewish and you're a woman. But he spoke to her. 
And he connected with her over something they would both understand. And the thing that they both understood, that common humanity, right now, in that moment, was that they were both thirsty. They both needed water. And a lot of us are not willing to connect with people over what we both understand. We, I think we have this, for those of us who have been kind of Christians a long time or um, know as a Christian I'm meant to be telling people about Jesus and it becomes kind of this pressure and we think we have to have a God conversation. I don't know if you've ever had that pressure, maybe it's just me, but I really, you know, I've got to speak to them about you know, eternal things and, and God things and I've got to make sure the conversation goes that let's just be human. Let's connect in our humanity. Let's connect around that. Our world right now needs us to connect in our humanity, now more than ever before, to connect in our pain, connect in our suffering, connect in our grief, connect in our anger, connect in our joy, connect in our celebration. We need to connect. And the interesting thing about this this moment between Jesus and the woman is it shows that racism and misogyny is not a new thing. It was alive and well. The Jewish people were against the Samaritans. It was taught. It was institutional racism. It was taught that the Samaritans were not, they were second-class people. They should not be associated with. Racism was rampant. It existed then and it exists now. Misogyny, you know, men and women, it's not a new thing in this, in this culture in this decade. Just because it's all over social media now and we've got different movements, it's always been a thing. And Jesus breaks down every single wall. He breaks down the, the male-female thing. In Galatians it says, There is therefore now no, neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, slave nor free. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And I thank God that I am in a church and in a community that believes that. Mm-hmm. That we are a church. That, that, and that's not the reality of a lot of places. That's not a reality of a, a lot of people's lives in this world. No matter what any report will say. And I mean that. No matter what a report says from the government or anything like that, racism exists today. It is rampant today. We cannot deny that. Misogyny is rampant today. Uh, Division and chaos is rampant today. That exists in our world. And we have the opportunity in our everyday lives to break down those walls. Just as Jesus did in that moment, in in our interactions with people, with dignity and value that we give to people. We have the opportunity, no matter what protocol says, no matter what perception is, we have the opportunity to break down rules. Jesus did it with that woman and we can do it today. He was willing to start the conversation. He wasn't going to shy away because it could be awkward. He wasn't going to shy away because it could be difficult. He wanted to give value and dignity. And I feel really strongly about this. You know, I've talked about it before, but we've got to... To, we've got to step out into this. We can't shy back, shy, stand back and be shy about it. We've got to step out. You know, it, it's everybody, you know, all cultures, all ethnicities, male and female, not, that's, that's not the reality. That's, but that is the biblical, biblical reality. That is what Jesus calls us to. And we've got to take that first step and have the conversation, connect around our, commun- our, our humanity. To say to someone, I just feel really angry. I feel really frustrated about this right now, don't you? Start in the, in the humanity of it all. This seems really unjust. Start in the humanity of it all. Don't, don't try and start with a big, you know, God conversation. This is how I feel. I'm, I'm grieving that yet another death has happened. My heart is broken that the gun laws in America are not sorted out yet. That in the midst of a trial, there's another shooting, another issue of institutional systematic racism. That's not good enough. And I can connect with people who don't know Jesus about that. We're all angry. It's not good enough. And yet we shy away often because it's such a big subject or we want to make sure we say the right thing and... But I wonder how many people in our workplace, in our Zoom meetings, 
on the bus, on the tube, in the shop, are waiting for us to go first. Let's not wait for people to come to us. If we're truly going to be everyone, every day, everywhere, we need to go first. And he went first, Jesus. He broke every protocol. You know, in that environment, ordinarily, if, if a Jewish man had seen her coming, they would have got up and walked away. And I think spiritually, sometimes I'm a bit like that. I see a difficult conversation coming or an awkward person, and I'll get up and I'll, I'll walk away spiritually because I'm nervous. I don't know what to say, don't know what I'm going to do, so I put my headphones in, switch off. But the world is waiting for us to go first. We need to get a little bit braver and begin to connect at a point in our common humanity. Will you give me a drink? How lovely is that? Where can we both start with what we both need? And what I love about it is this conversation is really awkward because she ends up answering him back, doesn't she? And uh, it gets a bit sarcastic. I really like her. She's like, what are you going to draw your water with? Her guards up, her defences up, and often... You know, we're worried that people are, are going to respond with kind of a haughty response and, oh, yeah, I don't want to hear about that. But often that's coming out of people's fear and people's pain. And Jesus just kept going. He understood that resistance from her wasn't really, you know, wasn't really about God, wasn't really about the eternal things. That was, that was hurt and pain. And Jesus, he could have said anything, but he didn't get drawn into the religious conversation about worshipping where and here and there. And, you know, we get so worried about the big religious conversations or that someone's going to get offended or I get offended by something someone else has said. And we make it all a big deal rather than just smiling and keeping going in the conversation and, and keeping it connecting around our humanity, the natural. Because Jesus started with the natural to get to the eternal. He didn't rush it. And if we start with the natural to get to the eternal, it just takes the pressure off a little bit. You know, just connecting with people about the everyday. People don't know they're looking for the Messiah. She didn't know she was looking for the Messiah. People don't know they're looking for Jesus. There's just a longing inside of them that they're they're trying to fill with all sorts of other things normally. But we know that only Jesus can satisfy Let's not go in with that. Let's connect around our humanity. Our world is desperate. Now, I'm not saying, and I just want to be really clear on this, I'm not saying that we start a conversation about the natural, you know, about how lovely it is to have a dog who's a, you know, a good companion and keeps me company, and then, you know, shoehorn in that Jesus really is the one who keeps me company and is my companion in life. And, you know, that's really manipulative and really awkward and just a bit gross. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying let's use the natural and then shoehorn in the eternal um, and just like, ah, oh, God, conversation, I'm so good. Those never go well, just so you know. <laughs> Don't try and do that. I'm also not trying to say we have, every conversation has to be a God conversation. And it doesn't have to be all in one conversation. There are friends I've been friends with for years. And just, we're connecting, connecting, and every now and then just dropping in. Just dropping in. A bit like Bob Pot in the, in the family time. If you didn't see the family time, do go and watch it. But Bob Pot, just leaking. Because we're, we're, this, is, this story, and so many people have made it about the woman's morality, it's immorality. It's not about that, it's about evangelism and salvation, which are big words. But basically that means about be, us being carriers of living water. That's essentially what it is. It's about how do we carry life to people? How do we connect with people and and drip and leak life all over them? And we don't have to have, you know, all of that. The the piece together is a great example. Now, I haven't trained in piece together, but I know a little bit about it. So Judy and Hester, forgive me if I get this a bit wrong, but it takes the the natural, the, the, the joy of craft and activity and art, you know, and as they're, as they're, putting together kind of broken pots, like Jerry was saying, putting together the broken pots, talking about how, and they lead that conversation around the, the natural to, isn't it interesting, I, my God takes the broken piece of my life and makes something beautiful out of it too. Or is there weaving and, and you know, just how God is weaving his story through our story. Just so beautiful in piece together. It's, it's about that. It's about bringing life, even that, these leaky, leaky pots that we are. 
Last week when I met with Winchmore Hill, we had our gathering. I said, we're all cracked pots. And we are all cracked pots. But we get to leak. Yeah, we get to leak. So we've got to go first. We've got to connect in our humanity, in our pain, in our grief, in our anger, in our weakness, in our joy, our celebration, so that Jesus can reveal himself. I think we get so caught up in that I must, I must make the conversation. I must, you know, I must. And if we will connect, Jesus will reveal himself. If we will go, if we'll go first, if we'll take that moment, if we connect with people, Jesus will reveal himself. Christine Kane said, as she talked about this um, a few years ago, she said, if, if you and I, would be willing to connect with people, Jesus would reveal himself to people. If you and I would be willing to connect with people, Jesus would reveal himself to people. You know, so often we, I've prayed for people, Lord, would you just reveal yourself to them? And I see in this passage, he says, yeah, if you'd actually go and connect with them, I will. How often do we, do we pray someone would see Jesus? He's like, you go. You be willing to go first. You connect with them in humanity and I'll reveal myself to them. <clears throat> I heard a phrase recently, it's time to make Jesus' last commandment our first priority. It's time to make Jesus' last commandment our first priority. Go into all the world. Mm. Tell people about him. You know, when I was growing up, it was all about the, the tracks, the little booklets. It's, it's not go and tell them about journey to life or two ways to live. or You know, sometimes those are useful tools, but go and connect with someone. Go and connect with the living water that's inside of you and go and leak all over them. Go and bring life to people. Because our part in this, honestly, is that, and this is where it takes the pressure off to have a God conversation to win people to Jesus, any of those phrases that we use, it takes the pressure off. Because our part in this is really simple. We encounter him, we talk to him, and then we talk about him. Because we need to be filled, like Ian was saying, we need to be filled with the living water first in order to carry it to others. But you know what? When you're, when you're filled, you can't help but carry it to others. You can't help but leak it all over people. Because it's in you. And because we're cracked pots, it just leaks out. And I can connect him, oh, that, that crack there. Well, that's when I know what it's like to have a broken relationship. But do you know what? I never felt closer to God than in that moment. Isn't that weird? Natural connection in our humanity. And God can reveal himself. It's that simple. Don't be afraid of your cracks and your scars and your leaks. God will use them. Only Jesus can satisfy us. It takes the pressure off, but there is an urgency to this. We know Jesus is coming back. So we're not to sit back and, and relax. We're to go and cross boundaries, to be willing to go first, to go through, even when we're tired, to, to have that conversation. But first of all, we need to be filled ourselves. And only Jesus can satisfy and the fun thing about all of this is when people see that we're, we're full of living water, when we're constantly kind of talking to them uh, about life and connecting in our humanity. I, and again, to say Tenerife, you know, some very funny stories, but because we were consistent in our friendship, consistent. I've never talked about makeup and things so much as I did then. You know, I was connecting in humanity, but after a while that conversation, why do we wear makeup? You know, what's that about? And then you get to talk about beauty and identity and where you find that. You know, and yeah, I've stood on, on corners or outside bars for hours talking about things in the natural. But then over time, the stories have come out and it was just, just so fun. You know, and to the point you get to tell stories about healings and all sorts of things. So much so that then you're out one night and a girl comes hobbling down the road. Jenny, 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 you know, you've told me about those healings. I need one now. My knee's really banged up. Where have you come from? <laughs> like, but that's the fun, that, that's, that's the, the eternal happening in the natural, that's the connecting, willing to go first, willing to chat to people and being full of the life of living water of Jesus so that we can leak it all over people so when they have that longing, they know where to go and Jesus can reveal himself to them. That girl ended up coming to church and getting baptised. It just, 
It's, really, it's a fun adventure. Let's, let's shake off this idea that we have to you know, do evangelism. It's only a word. Don't get hung up on it. But we do need to go and tell people about Jesus. And the, first, the way to do that is to be filled with the living water. Be filled with him. Talk to him so that you talk about him. To be aware of those divine appointments. To be willing to go. To be available. To take the first step. To go first. Not to shy away. It will change your life because you'll be nourished in a way like you've never been nourished before and it will change the lives of those around you. So I kind of want to do almost like a call to arms if that's the right phrase, but I I genuinely think this can change my life, your life and the life of our friends, our families. You know, what common ground is there with our family, with our friends, with our neighbours, with our enemies? What is the common ground that we can begin to connect and invite Jesus into? That we start with the natural, we connect so he can reveal himself to them. I think it's really fun. I think it's an adventure. And Jesus saw her and he he sees all of us. And so I want to invite us in this morning to this adventure. Go back, read this passage, see what else Jesus does and says about this. Let's step out. Let's cross boundaries, even if it's just over your front doorstep. That's a boundary a lot of us, you know, don't want to take. I think of my neighbours right now and how the ways I could connect with them in my humanity, in our humanity, and start to leak living water all over them. It's a great visual, isn't it? I love that, the little Lego that Bob popped. Bob pot dropped. Like we're just dropping, leaking, living water all over as we walk around. And as we connect, Jesus will reveal himself. We're gonna, I'm going to ask the band to come back up so that we can finish with our final worship song. And just as we do that, as we lead into worship, why don't we just take a moment I think some of us might might just want to say sorry to Jesus like I had to this week and that's okay Jesus isn't angry he's not going to beat you up he's a gracious God so don't worry about it but next time you get that nudge let's go for it together so some of us might just need to say sorry and you might it might be a really obvious moment that's happened in the last couple of weeks Or just something you've just not been aware of, really. Sorry that I haven't stepped out of my comfort, that I've made my comfort priority. Rather than leaking living water a priority. So I want to give those of us who need to just talk to Jesus about that, just have a moment. Say, Lord, I'm really sorry that I haven't really been available, that I haven't been willing to go where others won't go, even if that's just across the street. I'm sorry that I've made my comfort a priority. I just want to say I'm really sorry. (coughs) Jesus, help me to be more like you. Jesus, would you fill us now with your living water so that we can go and bring it to others, bring life and stories of you. Just like the Samaritan woman who went and told her story at the end of this. And loads of people came to know you, the power of encountering you So, Father, I pray that, first of all, we would encounter you so powerfully this week as we sit with you, as we talk with you, as we offer our lives to you. And then, Lord, would you show us 
who we can connect with in our humanity. Lord, we want to shake off the kind of the pressure and the the wrong teaching that you, know, you have to have a God conversation, have to make it, you know, bring someone, you know, all of that kind of pressure. And Lord, we just want to be human. But filled with the Spirit. Lord, give us eyes to see where you're calling us to, who to speak with how we can connect. And Father, we pray as we connect with those around us, with our friends, with our family, with our colleagues, with our, even with those we wouldn't normally get along with. Lord, as we connect, would you reveal yourself to them? By your spirit, would you speak to the longing deep in their hearts? we so want to see lives transformed like that woman at the well well thank you that we get to join in and be a part of it so Lord I pray this week each of us would have a divine appointment I pray that boldly Lord that each of us would would know, would know we have to speak that, we have to go, we have to, that necessary you know, feeling where your spirit is urging us, even if it doesn't make sense. Lord, and as we go, as we cross that boundary, Lord, that, that you would do something beautiful. As we make ourselves available and willing to be these jars of clay in all our brokenness, in all our mess, but say, Lord, we are available. And we do want to bring life to others, your life, eternal life. Lord, may we see that this week in Jesus' name. Amen.